Welcome back to part three of the mixing for the Schmincke colors. What colors do you actually need to buy and what can you mix yourself? Today we are looking at the Glacier set. So I have some of these sets as dots and some of these sets as pans, purely because I wasn't able to get all these sets, these colors as pans. And so I just got them as dots. And luckily the ones that I got as dots are colors that I don't absolutely love. So we are going to look at this set. As always, I have done the card. And so I have all the color references of all the possible colors on my palette. I have all the glacier colors swatched out. And I'm gonna set up the sheet and then we're going to get into swatching and mixing and see which ones you can create yourself and which ones maybe you should purchase if you want them. First up is Glacier Blue, which I only have a dot of. I'm unsure of how I feel about this. There are a couple in the super granulating sets that I go, this sort of feels like a cop out for the set. Like it feels like it could have just been in their regular line. Like it doesn't have the same effect of other super granulating colors. And Glacier Blue is one of them. The others are spread out in sets, but the Glacier set happens to have two that I feel that way about, and the way I've organized this palette, they happen to be right after one another. Both Glacier Blue and Glacier Turquoise to me just sort of feel blah. I have similar turquoises from other brands that cost significantly less, and I don't feel like it has any of the crazy granulation that you see in some of the other super granulating colors, which is disappointing. Glacier Green, on the other hand, it's a color that I actually love. It's a mixture with Potter's Pink, which definitely surprised me when I was putting together my Potter's Pink video and I realized that I could include it and was so much fun to mix for that video. It reminds me of a handmade paint that I've got in my palette, and while I do prefer the handmade paint that I've got, I do find myself reaching for Glacier Green on occasion. Glacier Brown, I've only swatched. I haven't actually used in anything, but there are quite a lot of browns in these palettes. So I think there are definitely some I like more than others. Yeah, I'm looking at it again on rough paper. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Overall, like, I feel most sort of blah probably about the Glacier set, which does surprise me because I liked the swatches of it online. I just don't love it in person. So now let's get into mixing. So I'm going to start with lapis like I did in the first one, even though I have a feeling that I'm probably going to switch to a different PB29. We're just going to start here. My PB, my PG50 is Cobalt Teal Blue by Daniel Smith because I know from the Potter's Pink video that it works pretty well. Did I get this in one? Ha! I did. Oh, that's always fun. I thought I was gonna have to switch you up and everything, and I didn't. So, yeah, I would say there's probably not enough of the PG50 for it to like have any real effect on the color based on how much I added to that mixture. I just put my hand in paint. Let's fix that black swatch. Glacier Turquoise is Co-Alt Tea Blue with a tiny bit of Cobalt Violet in it. Again, not a pigment that I had. 
his cobalt violet is in that line. Grab the wrong color. No, it's permanent mauve. <laughs> I've grabbed the wrong color. I'll be back. As I was saying, cobalt violet, all I could think was cobalt violet's got a different pigment number. And it's not PV16. So we've got some permanent mauve. That's too purple. To be fair, I like this color better. I wish this was the color that they'd chosen for their set. I would use the set more. It's like sort of misty morning from Daniels, from Roman Small. Whereas this is more what you need for. Still not quite bright enough. So let's add just a little bit more. So I think my glacier, uh, my cobalt blue is wrong. My cobalt teal. The issue is the only other cobalt teal I have is very green, which isn't what we want. We wanted a very blue one. That being said, I'm not unhappy with this mixture. So I think we're going to leave that there. Now we've got my favorite mixture, which is mixing anything with Potter's Pink. Um, it's just gloriously fun. I did this in two in the Potter's Pink video, or three, I think. Can I do it in less? Nope, no, you've gone too pink. I did it in three in the Potter's Pink video, I think. So can I do it in two? PBR6 and PG26, which is the first time I think PG26 has come up in any of the mixes so far. That is too green. Yeah, too green. Let's just wash it up a little bit. I only have one PG26, so we're sort of duck in a way. Don't have a whole bunch of options. This is also the Schminke PBR6. And I'm a bit concerned because it looks looks too bright. But it is their version of the color. So I'd assume they'd be using the version of the paint that they make. be using a PBR6 they don't sell up in stock. They seem to enjoy doing that with this set. PB35 and PBK11. PB35 is at a higher percentage. Is still too blue. Oh yeah, way too blue. Um, 
might have to go for a less blue cerulean. I do have one. I have two other cerulean's I can reach for. Actually, that's it's not that far off. Because it's got that blue undertone. We could try with the white knight cerulean, which is the right pigment number. The trick with Cerulean is that there are two different pigment numbers, and so it's just making sure that you've got... This is the 35 version, but there's also a 36 version. And this will not be 35. Oh yeah, that's it. So it is... a light Cerulean. It is not... A dark cerulean. It is a very pale cerulean. So let's do our swatches. Just swatching to the order we use them. I'm happy I realized that the purple was wrong before <laughs> I painted. Um, I also have a brain injury. At least I realized. There's pink. If you've watched the Potter's Pink video, you'll know that I have five or six versions of my palette and I like the Roman small version best for mixing. It does surprise me that this Cerulean was so much of a difference but looking at the pans like there's a huge color difference so Maybe I shouldn't be as surprised as I am. The green and the brown mix for the glacier brown is still tripping me up. Purely because I know that it's labeled as PBR6. And I just can't get this tone of brown. I'm wondering if I should go and double check pigment numbers. There's one cerulean. Just watch the other one next to it. Just so you can see the difference. Because there is a really noticeable color difference. Even though they're the same pigment. And that's why I have so many versions of different pigments in my palette. Those are both cerulean blues that are both PB35s. And we've got Aquarius Black. To find out the end of the row. So, let's unlabel these now. There we go. 
so I'm going to check the pigment numbers for Glacier Brown and just make sure that I've got the right brown. And yeah. So after checking under the brush, which is a great reference site, their swatch has it much greener than mine seems to have swatched out. So this one is actually pretty similar to how their swatch looks. So I think I'm gonna leave it. I'm really happy with this. I'm really happy with that. Now that this is dry, this one's actually pretty close. This is pretty similar. There's a bit less of the Potter's Pink coming through, mostly because as soon as I add more Potter's Pink, I find that it's going to purple. Um, and so that's just a balancing act that you sort of have to figure out for yourself is how purple do you want to deal with? Or how much purple do you want in your painting? But after looking at swatches online, like, this one seems pretty close to what it looks like in other swatches. So, I think I'm gonna leave it there. So I was partway through filming the Shires video when I realized that what I thought was PG-26 was actually PG-8. The paints are labeled Pine and Deep Pine, and I grabbed the wrong one. So Lacier Brown, these mixes, are not the right mix. And so we're just gonna, we're gonna cross out this color and I'm gonna try it again on this little patch of palette that I've got clean and see if by using the right pigments I can actually get this color. Oh, I need way more brown. That is already looking better. Oh yeah, there's the opacity that it was missing. So that's definitely a lot closer with the right pigments. I thought I was done and moved on to the next video and then I'd realize it was the wrong, it was the wrong color. I think this one's not far off. So my first attempt wasn't actually that far off using the correct pigments. Um, my second one's too green, but I'm actually quite happy with the first one. So that is an important lesson in making sure that I double and triple check the names of colors for all of the sheets going forward because I don't want to make that mistake again. Thank you. 